Right, so Terry, what have you done this week? Well, this week I've been mostly cleaning wheels. Uh, you'll put that in now. Today we're going to be tackling these rusty rims. As you can see, they're pretty gnarly, but they are solid. Uh, we can leave all the patina on the outside and just concentrate on getting all this rust out in the centre. Mainly because our friend Phil doesn't like to get punctures, but he is good at getting them. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use a wire brush or assortment of wire brushes on a grinder. Trigger warning, I won't use a guard, but I will be wearing PPE. Once we get it back to bare metal, all nice and shiny, we'll be uh, treating the rust with Cure Rust. For good measure, a bit of red oxide, and then to protect it fully, some nice anti-rust black paint. Right, let's get all this PPE on. Right guys, well that's uh, one wheel de-rusted. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's a lot shinier. You can actually see the metal underneath now. Uh, shed suffered a bit, it's a bit um, smoky, shall we say. Have a look at that. Nasty. Right, now the uh, rim's all clean and uh, free of all loose rust. Looks a lot shinier. So the first stage is to convert all the rust using uh, Cure Rust Rust Converter. So nice cheap brush for this one. And uh, I'm sure Pezza will put you on a time lapse. It only take about an hour to go off. It goes on like milk. Don't want it on the outside because it turns black. Right, well that's uh, the wheel fully coated. Uh, doesn't take long to go off, probably about an hour. And uh, we'll come back to it later. Wheels are now all cleaned up, rust converter on. Next stage, red oxide. I'm sure uh, Pezra will put you back on a time lapse because uh, this is going to be about as fun as watching paint dry. Final stage, let's paint them black. Uh, what else have we been doing? So, uh, fix the sprocket, but I'm sure you'll put that in now as well. So guys, uh, strange things that keep you awake at night. So I've been thinking a lot about this sprocket and obviously they're unavailable. And if they are, well, Pezza managed to find one and it was about 50 pounds for a tiny little sprocket. So I've been thinking a lot, what can we do? And I thought, well, I could draw these pins out and then just bolt them to a standard cub sprocket as that has threads, but the threads are in a different location. So what I've come up with is I've taken a standard cup sprocket, put it on the shaft, and I've found a 12 millimeter plate washer, which, funny enough, has a 14 mil hole in the center. The size of the shaft is 14 mil. So, put the sprocket on, plate washer on with a bit of super glue, glued the two together, perfect. What I need to do next is drill through these holes. Um, obviously, this is a sacrificial sprocket, so when the new one turns up, it'll have threads and we can then bolt this plate to the new sprocket. Now, obviously I'm gonna to have to trim this down, but I'll do that once I've drilled the holes. So I think that will fix my problem and we'll save a lot of money rather than 50 pounds for a new old stock. Because although this one looks quite good, it is uh, curled over and the bike, you know, it's gonna be ridden. So we really want a new one. So that's cured the problem, rather than 50 pounds, three pounds and a penny. Excellent. Right, that's the sprocket all finished now. So um, done the modification, machined it down, and now we'll have a test fit. Old sprocket off, new sprocket on. That's it, that's fully complete, jobs are good. So today, probably build the wheels up, clean the frame, and uh, you're gonna have to turn the camera around to get your reaction on this one. So I spoke to Phil, and he's decided he doesn't want the frame lacquered. So we've stripped it for- Can, can we uh, get him sectioned? We can. <laughs> uh, well, Phil's had to take an extra uh, paper round to, to pay for all the parts. Um, and I'm sure he's gonna be happy that I've got him grooved brake shoes. Right then, so. 
we've got to build this. Now, do you put your bearings in the fridge? Freezer? No. I do. Yeah, that fud? Yeah, fud. I think the fud. Yep, 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 there we go. <laughs> Along with the carb rebuild kit from Australia. Yep. Yeah. That doesn't want to go on there. No, it's one way. Yeah, they're weird, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're directional, they are. And it's very right. fine thread as well. Done. There we go. This, so. That sounds like it's home. Look, Phil. Proper rim tape. Not insulation tape. Or duct tape. Or whatever tape, or whatever find. tape you can find. Now, we probably both have ways of doing it. We, <clears throat> we both have ways of doing it, don't we? Yes. They're both, so... both, methods, both method, methods are different, but both work, so none of them incorrect. So are you a tire on guy first? <coughs> I'm a tire on guy first. Yeah, I'm a tube on. I'm a tire in tube, then tire and chip. Well, I'm happy for you to do it. No, 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 I'm, I'm very happy for you to do it. And then which way do you have your nuts? Do you have them both on the inside or both on one on the outside, one on the inside? Not on the inside. Just you have, the... You have none on the inside? Just the uh, curved bit. Oh, okay. But... That depends on the... Um... But there is no right or wrong way. Well, no, no, there is. There is a... The, the way is, so if you're... Well, not on the inside, yeah. Yeah, if you're, if you're a nut... If you're an off-roader... Yeah. You want one nut on the inside. Yeah. But if you're a road rider and you're going to be running at 100 psi, or you know high psi's, you want both nuts on the outside. Oh, I I just put one nut on the outside, no nuts on the inside. Oh but really? I, but yeah, I always leave the uh, what's it bit on. So do you want do you want yeah the the washer? But do you, so you want me to take this nut off? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So everyone has their different ways of doing it. Well, I'm putting some tyre soap on, try and make it a bit easier, because these tyres are cold, and they're quite hard to get on. Because they're brand new as well. Yeah, they're, they're going to be tubing. stiff, they're going to be stiff. I mean, I'll do it if you if you want me to. I've got one spare tube. Okay, that's all right then. I think the best technique we've seen was uh, Alan Price, when they did Tom's he, one. He pushed it down. But then we tried it, and we couldn't do it. Me and Tom tried it the other day, and we couldn't do it. When we were picking this bike up, we couldn't work it out. Oh, right. So what I do is I stick it in there. Like just stick it through. Yeah. So it makes it makes putting that on super easy. But it you, does the job. I use it on the floor again. Well, I usually I usually do it like that. Is the screen black? Yeah. If you tap the screen just once. Oh right, I can see what you're doing. You will come on. There we go. So that's on. Make sure it's all recessed in there. So here we have some rare footage of the Pezzer in his natural habitat putting tires on. Yeah, it's like no one's ever seen that on this channel. Ever. That's never been that's never been done. Not this year anyway. Have you seen me do a single tire change this a single tube change this year? <laughs> These tires are brand new, so if I do make any mistakes, it's not my fault. I always start round by the push that valve up, remember? When you get to the valve. Do you want me to put the camera down and give you a hand? Or you no, right? I'll get Go it. On. I just I just want to see how far on by hand I can get it without using a loop with a because this the, These tires aren't terrible. You see, you just watch me push a wheel bearing in by hand. Yes, yeah, so I wanna do my wrist in doing that, but <laughs> you can fit these by hand, but it's it depends on the tyre. Normally I use hider nails and you can't fit them by hand because they're really stiff. Yeah. Or well, what's the ones that blinking Liam has on his cub? Uh, uh, well, I know he's just bought some uh, Metzlers. They were Kenders, I think. He had Kenders or something. Yeah, they're difficult. And they're really stiff, they are. Right, this is where we pinch tubes Shut now. Up. We're not pinching the tubes. Because it's coming out of Bill's. Uh, Phil's gonna take out my my wages, isn't he? Let's just put the camera down. Put your back into. There you go. It's all right. Oh, look at that! Hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Don't don't do anything yet. I'm not going to. Perfect. Right. <laughs>
This is where we find out there is a directional on it and we're the wrong way around. I thought there was directionals on these. No. Are you sure? Well, I've never bothered. Like, if you, you know when you get a cut? Well, now we know that's in the wrong place. Oh, you idiots. <laughs> Front wheel done. <laughs> now we just build it up, just dry build. Just so uh, when we get the bike all back together. You did the bearings, I did the tyres. That was a good combo. It was a good combo. I don't like doing bearings, you don't like doing tyres. No, everyone needs a tyre pezzer. Right then, so let's uh, clean the frame up a little bit. And he doesn't want it painted or anything. He just wants to keep it original. There's a lot of dirt around here. I'm going to squirt a bit of brake cleaner. <laughs> you get well ventilated area. Yeah, it's yeah. ventilated enough. I'll put a fan on. Right, cleaning up the forks, what have you spotted, Terry? Well, this is an original. An extra bits and welded in. So it, it proves the theory that actually this is off a different bike. I mean, we can see the different colour paint down here coming through, but you were certain, Pezza, that the front ends didn't work, and you were right, because they've actually welded this bit on from the original forks. Yeah. So, yeah. Because it should have, it, the, the, other head, the other headlights, they've got a different dash and a different speedo. Yeah. S different speedometer, different, different headlight size as well. That little tang there, that's where that spring goes for the speedo. Oh, so okay. we need to find a spring, but I've got plenty of old springs. But yeah, obviously you can see a bit more of the uh, cut blue. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. so it could be off a C65 or a whatever. Oh, look at the paint run. I oh, know, they didn't do a very good job on that. Looks like Phil did it. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. Right, we're just cleaning it up and then we'll slowly assemble stuff, maybe. Caps clean, let's reassemble the forks to a certain degree. Yep, so we've done nothing. We literally took it all apart. Cleaned it. Cleaned it. We were going to paint it, but Phil doesn't want it painted. And uh, yeah, we revealed a bit more of the blue. It's funny that. about that, yeah. yeah. So we've done all that, cleaned all that. Cleaned some of the engine up now. So just make it a bit more, more presentable, I think. Squirty, scrubby, scrubby. Where's uh, WD? Use WD-40, because it's all grease based. Let's go straight with this. Watch your eyes. Okay, engine cleaned up a bit. Uh, we're taking off this side, are we? We take the clutch cover off, check the clutch. Have you got new seals? Yep. We've got a new gasket. Mm. Mm. Hang on. They're all pretty gnarly. I won't round them off anymore. Oh, to... it, that does turn. If you can get one to turn. It, it, it bud, you know when they, they, yeah, I'm not going to go, but yeah, it did, it did, well, this one did, did show signs. Have you got something to clean these out? Oh, that's fine. Let's yeah. try old school, screwdriver and hammer first. You sure you don't want, I think that would be quite good. See, you hit the top while I turn. Go on, just. <laughs> Let me hold the engine. Right. Okay. That's it, go on. No, right, that one's uh, knackered. This is knackered as well, I think. Yeah, good. No, nope, knackered. No, this one. Might work. Try that one. No, let's try a bigger bit. Go on. You in? That's it, go on. Yep, yeah. go on. Go on. Oof. 
Go. Yep. You lot have trusted me, haven't you? To whack that. Yep. Ooh. I don't want to whack your break your wrist for next. Yep. Woo! So we've got one more here. This is the really gnarly one. Alright, let's try again. Oh. Oh. We will be putting in new ones. Eight mil bolts. <laughs> oh okay, so they won't be screw heads. No. <laughs> Well, they were gnarly, they were. I'm glad we didn't. You had said we were right to drill some of them as well. Ye of little faith. Well, it's having the tools, that's the thing. Uh, do you want to get a new tray for a magnetic tray? The problem is, it's it's the people that have been here before without a juice screwdriver. Yeah, the old, um, and it, they have been there before, haven't yeah. they? You can know because they're all they're around. I mean, this one's proper gnarly. Yeah. So you know someone's been there before with a Phillips. Yeah. And just like tightened it up and just gone full pasty on it, haven't they? Well, it hasn't been off for many years. Well, it's not it moving. We don't know when. Oh, I think it'll come off now. No. Oh, no, not quite. There we go. Oh, gasket. Oh, look at that. Oh, let's check the uh, oil. Let's see the oil screen as well. There's the oil filter. Oh, Ooh. it smells nice. Mmm, smells old. Wrong screwdriver, but it'll do. All right. That's all right. Yeah. Oh, look, someone's been in here before as well. Look at oh, these. Oh, no. All chewed up. Oh, that's really nasty, that one is. Jeez, look at the metal on that. Just give it a little uh, love tap. Shouldn't, shouldn't need too much on these. They're only tiny little screws. Here you go. Here you go. Oh, these ain't turning at all. Go on, hit it harder. Is it going? Nope. It's rounded, isn't I've it? I've had to drill these out before. Well, this is going to suck. We're going to have to drill that, aren't we? Yep. Just get a bit of plastic ready. Round it, but I will drill through. You just hold it like that, yep, I'll drill. Yeah, I'll do. Tap it sideways. It should just, it's got to come upwards because of the... There, you go. there we go, okay. Now there should be enough thread. No, there's not. Ah, oh, gutted. Okay. Like I said, we're going to have to tap them out, aren't we? Maybe not. Well, I'm going to eat this off so I can then drill and re-tap the threads. Well, I don't know until we uh, take the clutch out. Two clutch plates. Okay. Right, so let's just move the engine out of the way. Finish with that for now. Yep. That's a big circlip. Don't you have a circlip? No, it's not, it's not like a proper circlip. Oh, okay. And then you saw that all spring up. Yeah. Oh, they are rusty, so good job we did take it apart. Oh, it is a good They're deal. They're clean up. They're clean. Oh, you're going to put them back in again? The plates I will, but the, the uh, metal plates I will. There you go. So there's the four little springs. One, two, three. All we've got to do is just replace the actual friction discs. Right. Have we got a vice? Yeah, of course I have. It's over there. But it's aluminium, I don't want to damage it. I think it's just going to drill through, you know. It's not turning. No, no, it's just drilling. Oh. Now, what if? Ah, there you go, one. Right, we got evolve grips. Or fingers. Oh, oh, fingers even. It's one out. Okay, there we go. Right, let's get the next one. More than one way to skin a cat. Poor cats. Yay. Right, now we need to work out what thread that is and tap them through. Well, what are we doing now, Terry? I think that's waiting for parts now. I think that's it. Uh, can't do much until we get some parts. So get the clutch on order, some new bolts for the uh, casing. And uh, next time we'll assemble the frame and the forks, swing and I'll make it a rolling bike again. Yeah, but it'll probably be a couple of weeks before we get parts at least. Yes, so we're waiting on Australia, uh, some far out Asian country as well. So Thailand. Thailand, that's the one. Ladyboy land. Can't put that in your field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, don't forget to like, comment, whatever. I'll catch you in the next series, episode, whatever. Bye.